Hello again and welcome to the Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. So today's video is going to be another basic unit tactics video. Uh, and in today's installment we're going to be looking at the company commander. Now originally I was going to group both officers together, the company commander and the platoon commander. Uh, but instead I thought both units while similar are actually quite different. So we are going to be taking, um, going to be looking at those two separately, but a bit more in depth. I thought that was the be better way to do it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the company commander is possibly the mo one of the most important units that we have. Okay, it's why I'm covering it. You know, if inf I would say infantry squads, which is the first video, are the most important unit that we have in the Imperial Guard. Um, company commanders... There's pretty much no point in taking infantry squads if you're not going to take company commanders with them. That's how good company commanders are. That's how useful they are. Um, now, looking at a company commander's stats, it doesn't look like too much to write home about. Pretty squishy in terms of uh, a character's stat lines. I mean, yeah, you have weapon skill 3 plus, blitz skill 3 plus, but it's still the usual strength and toughness 3, and uh, only 4 wounds. So... You know, for a character, for what is meant to be the equivalent of our sort of space marine captain, that's pretty weak. Um, the only thing is, is that what you've got to remember is a space marine captain is a hero of the Imperium. He is designed to do pretty much everything. He can give some buffs to people around him and he can fight his way through pretty much any unit in close combat. He's, he's a, he, you know, He's an Astartes at the end of the day. Company commanders are not. And that's sort of the first thing that we, or if as a new guard player or someone who's maybe coming from Space Marines to Imperial Guard, um, what you've got to remember is your characters, they're not designed to be heroes. Okay, they're not designed to go in there and uh, beat other enemy heroes in single-handed combat. Um, in one-to-one -one combat, I should say. Um, it's just, it's just not how it works. Okay, Imperial Guard characters. I mean, it is possible. There are certain certain loadouts like Armageddon, uh, Steel Legion plus uh, sort of Conquest loadout, or the um, the Vestroyan Relic plus Vestroyan uh, Warlord trait. There are some ways of making your company commander a close combat beast, but it's just not worth it. Okay, and and even when kitted out for hardcore close combat, he's still not going to be as good as a proper close combat character. So don't even try, really. What you want your company commanders to be doing is supporting and buffing your other units. And the way they do this is they have orders. Now, something that's really important for new players to understand who, like I said, we use Space Marines as a good example, because I know a lot of Space Marine players that eventually transition to the Imperial Guard. Because it's a natural transition, because you can still use your Space Marines whilst you're building your Guard forces up, and they're good allies, and they're still humans, they're still, the, you know, in inverted commas, the good guys of the Warhammer 40k universe. So, what you have to understand is, a Space Marine, the difference between a Guard Commander and many other Commanders is we don't have an an aura buff or what or an area of effect buff like a like a captain does for example you know the captain or a chaplain for example they have a buff where all units within six inches get some form of rerolls okay which is very powerful because if you can bring you know three four five different units or and keep them all within six inches of your space marine hero they're going to get a buff with guard, it doesn't work like that. With guard, you get orders. Now, orders are really good, but we're not going to go into too much depth on what they are here. That will be a separate video. But orders are kind of like our buffs, except for we have to pick one unit. So rather than selecting, all the, rather than just universally affecting all units around us, we get to do it to one unit at a time. Now, company commander can issue two orders, which means he can give out two buffs to two separate units, a turn okay now orders are really really important and this is what this is basically 
why you take company commanders. You don't take him for his close combat or his shooting capabilities. You take him for orders. And company commanders are really, really vital because you're, if uh, any guard player will tell you that infantry, regular infantry just aren't that good. But the moment you start putting buffs on them via orders, they become fearsome. There is a space, you know, and the thing with orders is that whilst then they don't target a huge amount of people at a time, the buffs they provide are, I would say, much stronger. So rather than handing out a weak buff to everyone, an order is a very strong buff to a specific target. And they're also much more versatile. Rerolling ones to hit is useful. But there will be certain times when you don't want to shoot something, when you want to be able to move quickly. Guard have an order for that. There will be times when you just can't really afford to fall back out of combat. Maybe you'll lose an objective to do that and you need to you need to be able to do extra damage to the opponent in close combat. Guard have an order for that. That's the difference. Guard orders are very specific and they only affect one thing but they affect that particular trait to a much greater degree than what most other heroes will give you. For example, a space marine commander may allow a unit of tactical marines to reroll once to hit, but a guard commander can tell that could tell an infantry squad to double its firepower output with first rank fire, second rank fire. That's a big, big increase. So that's what you've got to understand. Company commanders are really, really good for supporting your infantry, and they are they are good. But just don't be throw them into close combat. Now, to that end, what should you be equipping your company commanders with? Well, for me, there's only really two options. And we're talking about codex options here. You either leave them as is, and that's last pistol and chainsword. Because what you have to understand is every point that you put into these guys is a point that you could be putting somewhere else to an actual more damage dealing unit. These guys have one job to issue orders and that's something you shouldn't forget. The other thing is if you really want to contribute to the fight, then you could give them a bolter. And now if you had a, if you have a few points left over, let's say you've got four points left over, there's in terms of hierarchy, you probably want to be putting bolters on your officers first, just because they hit on three plus rather than sergeants where they hit on four pluses. This is sort of leading, you know, this is linked to the other video I did about sergeant loadouts. Um, so that's it, really, guys. That's it. Company commanders, they're great support units. Uh, the buffs they can hand out can turn your infantry squads from a rabble of low damage output units to a well disciplined, very, very impressive unit. And that's what they're good for. But company commanders, this is the difference between company commanders and platoon commanders. Company commanders are very valuable. They're not throwaway units at all. And so they tend to operate in the main bulk of the army behind the ranks of infantry. Now, platoon commanders function very different, differently in my experience. Okay, uh, Platoon commanders are a much more aggressive unit. But We'll get into that at another time. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Leave lots and lots of comments. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.